thank you all so much for being here. And we have the most wonderful guest today. She is a brave LGBT activist who has uh, called out the insanity of the LGBT activist movement. She is very, very beautiful. She is very, very funny. She is intensely brave, intensely clever. I just love her to pieces. She is the one, the only, the very excellent Ariel. Garcella. Wow, what an intro that was. I'm not even going to lie. That was like the best <laughs> intro anyone's ever given me. And well, I've only I was... met you one time. I didn't even have a lot of time to suck up to you. No, no, but... no. But when when you did meet me, everyone, we met at CPAC earlier in the year. Ariel, you were, I'd never mm-hmm. thought of this. You were so gorgeous to me. And I was, you know, there of largely course. by myself. You were so welcoming. You were my fabulous guide and escort. You introduced me to such wonderful people. So thank you. That's one of the reasons I love you. I, I love you and I love <laughs> I love doing uh, these kind of these kind of videos with you. I've had you in quite a few videos. It's funny that you said that whole intro because you were one of the first people that found me after I came out, re came out of the closet uh, <laughs> because of that whole Sydney Mardi Gras like fiasco. Mm. Like you had yeah. made a video uh, talking about that and and. I found you, and and it's very rare that I find videos of people Mm. making videos about me because usually they're negative videos. (laughs) So I don't watch them (laughs) or I don't search for my name. I just don't do it. It's not good for for my mental health. No, I happened to come across yours and I came up in my recommended, or somebody might have sent it to me, I think. And I was like, oh my God, this girl is, is..." at the time, I didn't know what the word based meant, but I'm using it now. I was like, this girl is based. (laughs) She is smart. She's Australian, and they're not all crazy. No, <laughs> besides besides Sydney Watson, I mean, she was the only Australia uh, girl that I person that I knew from Australia that was like not crazy. Mm. Besides well, no. that guy with the beard, Isaac. Oh, he's Isaac the only other, Butterfield. Yeah, he's the only other one that I know from Australia that's not like super super woke. Yeah, uh, but, Isaac yes. Butterfield is amazing. I have not met him. I have not spoken to him. He probably has no idea who I is, but like, I'm an absolute massive fan of his. He's so funny. I'm sure funny. he knows who you are. Oh. There's only so many of you guys out there, and there's only only so many of us based YouTubers. I don't care how many subscribers he has. Mm. You have subscribers as well, and you have very good content. And we find each other, like I said, I found you pretty quickly. So mm. we find each other it needle in a haystack sort of thing like we just but somehow we find each other yeah we all sort of gravitate towards each other um mm-hmm. which i've sort of noticed as well like there's people that like when i first started youtubing i'd watch and i think oh my god they're amazing and now i kind of you know we, we we're talk to them and i started having them on my channel it's like we're sort of magnetized to each other because it's this sort of insane whirlwind of like leftist hate that you know blows us around yeah. so when you find someone you know um yeah when you, well, it's, it's good them. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's it's mental. My, my, I'm realizing how my red and sunburnt my nose is, but <laughs> I <laughs> I got burnt under my chest. I got, oh no! I know I'm Italian, and I still burn if I'm like out in the sun for way too long. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's I mean, Sydney and you and I would say you were the first person that that like befriended me, so to speak, after I came out. But before I came out of the closet, meaning leaving the left, it was Tim Poole and Sydney Watson, mm. and I hadn't even met Sydney in person yet. I had met Tim like maybe once or twice, I think actually. And I was over at his yeah. house and I remember I was freaking out because I was like, I have to make this video about, you know, leaving the left because I am sick of people thinking that I'm part of this crazy group and I need to be damage control. I, I knew I needed to step up to the plate like Blair White had. Although mm. she's kind of always been based. So I can't yeah. really compare that, compare it to me. But she was definitely uh, somebody that I look up to, uh, that I looked up to for that reason. She was mm. always, she was always, you know, with, with, with her, with her ideas and such, she just, she just said it straight up and yeah, Sydney, Sydney helped me write the video. I showed it to Tim. I put it out two weeks later. I was in Sydney and they tried to <laughs> try to not allow me to enter the country, not because oh of that video, God. but I'm sure that video didn't help. No. And yeah, they, they tried it, interestingly enough. And I, and you know this because you, you did the story on it, but from what I remember, this was also like three three years ago now, right? This was literally right before COVID happened. Yeah, I think like so, February 2020. 2020, In, in yeah. the before time, before yep. everything just it was went right to hell. Befo- it was right before that. And I had gotten a, an email from one of the lesbian um, event people, mm. one, of the, one of the events, 
the, actually the only lesbian, but not one of the events, the only lesbian event at Sydney Mardi Gras, which is gay pride, LGBT pride for people who don't know. And um, she emailed me and she was like, listen, I'll fly you out and I'll give you, you know, whatever. I'm not going to tell her how much I got. I didn't get paid that much money, but mm. it should, you know, she gave me, she gave me a stipend. She's like, I'll fly you out. If you do this event with me, it's the only lesbian event at Mardi Gras this year. And I was like, I'm down. Never been to Australia. would love to go. Mm. And then I announced that I was coming and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, because you probably remember this better than I do <laughs> since you did the research on it, but I, it was a female to male yeah. drag queen. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. But they didn't it identify was. as a guy. They identified as queer, maybe. I don't I don't Something know. Something like that. Some weird shit. Yeah. They did not want me there. They started a petition. And, like, you know what? I'm going to give it to them. I think it got, like, 2,000 signatures or something, right? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, it don't was, allow yeah. Ariel to come into Australia. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. did really well. I was like, okay. I was like, listen, if people <laughs> hate me that much, they're giving me that much energy. <laughs> you're still exactly. giving me energy. So, but it's energy and it's traction. I mean, I mean, like, I remember... Um, when that happened, and uh, basically, as as you say, there was a a drag queen who goes by the name of, of Johnny Valkyrie, I believe. Yes, their name yes, is. that sounds, Johnny that sounds Val- right. Look, it's a good drag name. I like yeah, that. Yeah. It's a Johnny, <laughs> Johnny yeah, you yeah. gotta give them that. It's a good drag name. But I basically, like, yeah, Johnny. Uh, female to is, male drag queen doesn't make sense. But yeah. no, I, well, I just think it's cheating. That's yeah, why I always thought because Johnny yeah. is of is a female who yeah. identifies as a man but also does drag. So really right. when you add that equation together, that's just a female dressing up as a woman, which pretty, I think is pretty much, yeah, pretty which, much. I, which, yeah, which yeah. I think is cheating. Like if I, yeah, were, yeah. if I were a male drag queen, I'd probably, I'd actually be really infuriated because I'd be like, damn it, that's not fair. It's, it's <laughs> easier. It's, it would be easier for them to pass, to be passable. But to me, that would be weird because you want to pass as the opposite sex than you are. Yeah. So wouldn't yeah. dressing in drag give you dysphoria? I, I'm not, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense to me, but whatever libertarian yeah, well, live live and let live but like not if you're going to come for me because then i'm going to come for you bitch so <laughs> yeah, exactly i mean you're yeah. entitled you're entitled i think to criticize this person yeah. because as 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 you said it um in my opinion it was so opportunistic of them because as you said mm-hmm. this was the only lesbian event at sydney mardi gras and for anyone literally that really the only don't know, one yeah sydney mardi gras is this is this massive massive um really, I think was originally just gay pride event. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's huge. And, and like Sid- Sydney is, um, I remember someone told me, it's like the second gayest city in the world after Rio de Janeiro. There's a really big kind I can of, see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gay, com- gay theatrical community. It's mm-hmm. only in recent years that I've noticed it becoming like bitterly political. But prior to that, it was all just, you know, about fun and art and all that kind of stuff. That's how it should be. Yeah, which was how it should be before this sort of dreary political identity politics gets Mm -hmm. chucked into it and ruins it. Um, But, yeah, it was making that video, I realised there seems to be this kind of lesbianophobia. It's not actually a word, but, you know, lesbophobia, lesbian hatred within the LGBT community. I mean, how Mm -hmm. can at this massive gay pride festival they only have one event that's about lesbians? And they tried to cancel it. Mm. because they they said that I was they said that I was transphobic I mean (laughs) I am transphobic if the word transphobic means that I wouldn't suck a dick even if it was attached (laughs) to a a, you know a woman a trans woman or if it means that I think non-binary people generally aren't making sense when they talk about gender if you know if if transphobia if being transphobic means that I believe in transsexualism being a medical condition then yeah I'm transphobic (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like it's almost like the word transphobic goes against what the word transgender actually means mm. or what my opinion in our opinion i think you agree what we think it should mean yeah well for me the the notion of being trans has always been describing someone who has gender dysphoria you know which is right. a, a quite a crippling as we know, quite a crippling yeah. uh, mental health condition um, that creates sort of an extreme discomfort with your biological sex relative to how you feel in terms of your gender. And there, you know, there are lots of ways of remedying that, like, um, you know, behavioral therapy, counseling, whatever. But for some people, um, socially and medically transitioning to live as the gender you want to live at um, actually makes the most sense. Um, you know, and it makes them feel better about themselves and it helps them lead mm-hmm. uh, productive lives. That's being trans. Um, right. But just claiming that you're the other gender because you kind of want to be, 
I think that just undermines the whole notion of, of treating gender dysphoria. It does. I, I had a video, uh, interestingly enough, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm, fair, I'm fair game to criticize myself. Uh, I had a video that I posted last Sunday about uh, a trans woman. They identify as trans. And if you identify as trans and, and you have gender dysphoria and you present as the gender to the best of your ability that you identify as, I'm going to believe you. Uh, some, some of my trans women friends though said that it was a bit iffy because it felt, it felt like this person was more of a performative person, which my answer to that is I can understand that because when you see somebody performing gender, it's usually a gay man dressed in drag. So you associate that with being a drag queen. So I guess the point of the story is it's tricky to tell these days. And I think I think this one woman, this trans woman, it probably is a trans woman, but because when you're performing gender, it's seen as a gay guy thing. And mm. this trans woman is attracted to men. I think it's very easy to conflate the two. And I think gender in general has become a very slippery slope thing, right? Like nobody kind of knows where someone is because you just, you have either you have to believe them or you're transphobic. Mm. You know, so it's it's become very difficult to tell who's actually transgender and who's not, you know, particularly I noticed with with Gen with Generation Z. I mean, like I get um, really annoyed, you know, when people well, I don't get annoyed, but I sort of roll my eyes. But, you know, when people put their pronouns like in their email signature or in their bio on Twitter, when it's just like she, her or he, him. And I'm like, mm -hmm. your, your name is Gemma and you put she, her against your name. like Virtual just, signaling. We can kind of guess that your pronouns are she, you know. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, you know, it irritates me. But it's interesting with Gen Z. Um, I was at an event a little while ago. I was speaking at an event, and it was a very broad spectrum of ages. There were teenagers. There were old people. And I was looking at these Zoomers who were sort of in their, you know, their teens and late teens, and I'm thinking, you are all so androgynous. Like, in, <laughs> in it's a thing. Said, I was like, Unironically, I feel like if I talk to you, I would have to go up and say, and say I'm them. Really sorry, but what are your pro like? How how, yeah, how yeah. should I address you? Yeah, it's interesting in yeah. the younger generation. It's it was very different. Like when you you and I are, I'm a little older than you. I think think maybe three or four years older. Couple of but years. um, in my gener in my time, <laughs> in my time, and this is old. <laughs> but like Back when, when I was, was in high school, the yeah, when I was in high school in the early two thousands, like these people would have been labeled as goths. Like yeah. that's it's straight up, yes. Like they were the people that got high, <laughs> dressed in all black. More power to them, you know. Mm. Like went to art class, loved loved drawing, loved painting, loved loved expressing themselves. Uh, listened to emo music and shit. Good for you. Now, then it became uh, scene the scene kids, right? Wh which was like the Tumblr generation, mm. and now it's these TikTok Gen Zers who everyone has blue hair and they're non-binary, but you, and like 99% of those people that are non-binary are female and yeah. you know damn well, they, and they identify as queer and you know damn well they would never like ever go down on a girl. Like no. they just wouldn't. No, <laughs> you're no, not no, queer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're not. You're not. Yeah. It's part of that sort of cultural thing. And I reckon you've, you've touched on this as well when it comes to young women and gender specifically. Um, you sort of identified the, you know, tendency to identify as non-binary or as trans, because there has been a, a disproportionate explosion of young yes. women yes. identifying as trans over the last 10 years, like a, yes. a total disproportionate and if you, spike. If you, yeah, and, and I got a lot of hate for, for speaking on that because I'm not trans, mm. but I am a woman and I speak on women's issues. This has been a, a, a constant theme on my channel for the entirety of the channel for 12 years that I've been making videos. I've always talked about women because I love mm. women. I am a woman. Mm. Um, and plus, I think women are interesting. Not that I don't yeah. talk about men, but I talk about women more. And it, it's, the, it's been the constant theme. And I've seen, if you, if you look at the statistics, I believe, from before maybe 2015, I want to say, I, I, I'm making it up. I don't know exactly what it is, but it is there. It is a real thing. Look up the statistics specifically for the UK and for that yeah. clinic, the Tavistock clinic. Tavistock, yeah. There was, I believe, maybe 90% of the of transgender people back then in the UK were male, male to mm. female. Now it's reversed. That's not 
that, and this is for all of time, 90% mm. of people that were transgender were male to female. It's very and rare for somebody, it was very rare for somebody like Buck Angel. Yeah. Um, yeah, for somebody, for, for, for female to male, it was very rare for the entirety, right, of the, of the universe, <laughs> the yeah. entirety of humans. All of a sudden, in the last five years, it's flipped. It's so There's something when that's when something like that happens, it makes me question why is this happening? It's a society thing and not a biological thing, right? It's not a mental, it's not a not a uh, chromosomal thing or like cr chromosomal uh, mishap or or biological, biological or brain chemistry. Some, brain, brain chemistry, something if it's more common in males, that's something to do with with their, you know, with their sex characteristics or their genetics or whatever. Yeah, it, like somebody said in the comments, it became a trend. It became yeah. a trend with women that didn't want to identify as women. And mm -hmm. you know what? Part of me wants to believe, and part of me does believe, that it's because a lot of these, a lot of these people that are identifying as non-binary would probably, in the past, have been simply just like tomboys or butch lesbians. Yeah, and like a good percentage, the ones that are identifying as queer now, <laughs> the, ones yeah. the ones that are identifying as non-binary that date women. They would have just been butch lesbians back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, you watch my videos and I have, I have, I talk about lesbianism all the time and, and, and sexuality and the shit that I get, if I was, a, you know, if I, if I was a kid growing up in today's world and I was a butch lesbian, I'd probably identify as non-binary too, because mm. I wouldn't want to get the hate that I get for being gay. Yeah. You know? So, so, um. You think like, it, you know, the left talks about internalized misogyny. Yeah, and, I was going to um, say, you yeah. said that at the very beginning of the stream. I'm glad you got back to that point. You said at the very beginning of the stream, the left is very misogynistic and specifically mm. misogynistic against women that like, that are attracted to women. Mm. For Why sure. is that? Why is that, do you think? Because, because you, you um, think like, you know, the left is full of feminists. Surely they'd be like really yeah. big on the, you know, women who are interested in women. What is this? You would think, right? In lesbian misogyny. The... The truth is I'm still trying to figure that out, but my best bet would be that women are the most, are the easiest to bully. And mm. I think people on the left, on the far left, we're talking about the woke, the crazies, right? Not just like mm. a leftist in general. Uh, the bad faith leftists. The bad ones, right. Like I, I truly think that they're, they're, they're woke bullies. I really do. And I think if you're, if you're gonna be a bully, the easiest people to bully, unfortunately, well, it's not, I guess there's no fortunately in this case. Just, you don't want to bully anybody. But mm -hmm. unfortunately for me, I guess you could say for us, it's it's women. And you see this you, you see this when it comes down to, to people like Gina Carano and oh, Candace yeah. Owens, right? People that are powerful women that don't agree with the left and they won't have it. Yeah. So even more so, and, and lesbianism, you have to remember, lesbianism, no matter what side of the, of, of the political aisle you're on, it's always been seen as less, it's always been taken less seriously by anybody. Think of it this way, and I had a video a while ago. Uh, I should say, I should say specifically feminine lesbians are always taken the least seriously. Yeah. I had a video a while ago, <clears throat> it was like five, six years ago, and I interviewed guys, I, I believe some guys that were, no, I don't, actually not all of them were married. It was, a, it was like five or six guys, and I asked them, because most guys want to have threesomes, right, with another girl. So I asked them, I, <laughs> yeah. so I asked them like, is it cheating? If you have, if you have a three, uh, uh, sorry, I said, is it cheating if your girlfriend sleeps with other the girl? And 90% of them said, and actually all of them, I believe all of them in the video said no, as long as I'm mm. there to watch or to, or to engage in it, or at least as long as I know that she's doing it and she tells me, I said, okay. I said, but what if that girl was butch lesbian? They were like, oh no, 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 no. Oh my Forget gosh. It. They went nuts. So it's about feminine sexu sexuality and lesbians most of the time you'll, you'll see feminine lesbians get bullied more than butch lesbians that's just how it is because all the butch lesbians are non-binary maybe I, I, that's maybe what it is honestly it, it's really that's gotten so to that point that is people don't is... take yeah people don't think about it your, your husband probably thinks the same thing <laughs> I just, maybe 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 not I but like i'm telling so. him i'm telling you no he's, he's a virgo he's like no this is mine but like <laughs> i'm telling you I'm yes, telling I, don't, you, I don't think Callum. That's no, Callum's Vir Virgos mindset. are very, very monogamous. They're like, no, this is mine, and I'm once I'm in, I'm all in. But like, mm, he is. I'm telling you, most men are for it until they think, until they feel de uh, emasculated. Emasculated. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's very, feminine that's feminine sexuality. Yes, feminine sexuality is not taken seriously. So, and what's more feminine than two women together? Oh, you hey. know. Wait, Callum is here. What's she, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here it Callum. is. Don't have a bar of that. He says he doesn't have, a, he says you're right as he's a Virgo and very monogamous and he yep. wouldn't have a bar if I were doing that. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. <laughs> he was there. Oh my God, Ariel, I really want you to come to Australia or us to go over there because I so want you to meet Callum. I think you guys would just I will get on come like back when I get a chance. Uh, house on fire. Yes, come, you can, you can stay with us and we'll, we'll I would have love a really it. good time. Oh my God. But it is so interesting. Um, about feminine sexuality because like if you look at sort of the history of lesbians they really for a long time kind of flew under the radar like for hundreds of years i think it was either mm. uh, queen victoria or queen elizabeth where, where male homosexuality was illegal but not female homosexuality because the monarch i think it was it was one of the two just said oh well women wouldn't do that kind of thing or, or so they just don't take it yeah. seriously the same thing is it happens in in the middle east to this day yeah, Two, I had a conversation with with the trans woman uh, that's from Iran. Uh, she mm -hmm. lives in uh, she lives somewhere in the states now, Pennsylvania or something. But uh, she's from there, and she, although she's a trans woman, of course she has gay friends. She was talking about how uh, homosexuality with gay men is t like twelve times as more like it's like a law. It's like three times or ten times as bad. Like it's like written in wow. law. It's much more worse. It's considered much worse than homosexuality between two women. It's not just like a thing. It's not just like a, a social thing. It's literally written in law. Written into law. That's written so into law that it's worse, a worse crime. Yes. So again, I, I think it has also has to do partially with the fact that when you're being penetrated mm. or when you have a penis and you're penetrating somebody, it's seen as a more binding or derogatory Visceral. act. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sexual sexuality like yeah and and it's sort of a philosophy I guess, that goes yeah into yeah. This. yeah and i think yeah. in in a, in a culture that is is misogynistic you know like in the middle east or certainly you know in mm. medieval and victorian britain which is very patriarchal women were considered inferior if you're being penetrated then you're sort of embodying the women's position yes. so that mm -hmm. i think that could have a part of it too we had Definitely. a super chat yeah, we have a, a yeah, I saw that. Marusha Dark. Yeah, thank you so one. much, Marusha. Marusha's one of my regulars. Marusha, it is mm -hmm. so lovely to have you here. Um, she says, transphobia suggests a fear of trans people, but really it's more trans anger and trans disgust than people feel, that people feel towards them. Yep. Also, anyone remember when the left were all about stop dictating other people's sexuality? Yep. Good point, don't you think, Ariel? It's, it's perfectly worded, in my opinion. I, I think... Yeah, I, th I think it is trans disgust because people don't want to people that are that are sane <laughs> mm. don't want to be told how to live our lives. We, we yeah. know what's best for us. And when you're telling us that if we don't feel a certain way, we're bigoted. It doesn't sit right with us. And mm. when we speak out again, when we speak out about it, we get more of it, you know, more vitriol, more hate. Mm. It's, all, you know, all for the left. The far left, like this person said, they were all in, in the beginning when I was a leftist, they were all for live and let live. Yeah. Slowly but surely it became where the far right used to be years ago, which was bizarre for me to see. Mm. But now little by little, people are slowly starting to see that this is happening. Like I have I have tons, I'm sure you know too. We have tons of friends that on the internet, you know, they won't say the things that you and I say. Yeah. But but they don't believe half of the crap that they read. Mm -hmm. they, they're afraid to say it, but they don't. They don't believe it. So mm -hmm. people are making that shift. It's just not as visible. We're not as visible as we would like to be right now. Yeah, it, it's it's, yeah. it's tricky, isn't it? I mean, it's trans disgust that... is a good way of putting it because it's. I, I, I was going to say. Let me just finish this once. No, of thought. course, finish. Yeah, sorry. Um, I was going to say. There's there's like a famous cartoon. I think it was. I think it was. Colin maybe did it. He does a lot of cartoons, but it was of the slippery slope. And it's like, we just want to get married. And it's like, yes, that's literally all I wanted. I just want, I want equal rights. Now it's like the slippery slope is all the way down here. Ooh, let me go. Oh, it's all the way down here. And uh, I can't remember what it said, but it was like pedophiles are, are, are uh, part of the community and all the, and it's like, you know, 
trans women mm. are women and they belong in jail with with other women and they, even though they're getting raped and, like it's this is yeah. this is insanity yeah so the slippery slope is real and it's it's people people don't care like 95 percent of people that i know 95 percent of people i bring trans friends around all the time nobody gives a shit nobody yeah. says anything nope nobody cares mm. just don't impede on somebody else's rights yeah, and the That's thing it. is, most most trans people will will agree will agree with that. And by the way, for any nefarious mm -hmm. leftists yes. who might be watching this, because there are, you know, there's going to be a couple. Neither me nor Ariel thinks that trans people are disgusting. Neither does Marusha. Just so you don't take us mm -hmm. out of context. Here we right. are talking about things like self identification and impinging right. on other people's faces. No one here thinks trans people are disgusting. I'm like, don't you hate? I have to do. I have to do these stupid qualifiers, like. <laughs> I do hate now. it. I hate. I hate, I hate it. But it. This is this but, is our job, so we have to make sure we're you know. Well, this is this is the world that we live in. Like yeah. there are there are people out there who would literally take those sound bites that you and I mm -hmm. have just done and go, look at this, Ariel and Daisy, uh, and Daisy are transphobic. It's like no, right, right. no, we're not. But, I mean, the people. You know what though? At this point, we have to just know that those people are going to think that anyway, and I, well, and yeah. I just I just move on. That's that's yeah. it. Yeah, I had yes. to, I had to just be like that. I, it was making me too crazy to, to to go through every single person that was calling me transphobic and yeah. trying to convince them otherwise. If they think that, and they're stupid, in my opinion, if they're stupid enough <laughs> to think that, to think that after all the content I've done in favor of trans people, good riddance. Honestly, well, exactly. That's point. that's the thing. I was watching some of your uh, videos from twenty twenty um, when you were coming out, and you know you were discussing um, not not trans people in a negative life, but self-identification and the concept Correct. of, 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 you know, the difference. putting, yeah, the, the difference at the end, the, the difference should be celebrated. And you, mm -hmm. you had so many trans people on your channel, but you were getting attacked by LGBT activists for being transphobic. I mean, how does that work? Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, like this, what, what is, what's her name again? Like she said, it's, it, it's not working. It's making people disgusted at trans people. So, you know, what Buck and I say is like, let the adults continue the conversation now. You had your time, children. Mm. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a demeaning way because they're young. I mean that because they're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being ageist. I'm not being ageist. I'm being, you know, I'm being smart. Let the adults mm. take over the conversation. Like we were doing fine until you came along and, and started mm. talking about this gender identity in, in, in like you said, a self-identification kind of way. And that's yeah. not working for them. It's not working for us, I should say. It's not working for the community. The The rate of LGBT acceptance has tanked over the last, what, five years? It's, mm. it's, it's very low. And it's because we have, we, and I say we meaning the community, not me. We have put these people out in front, like Alok Vinman, whatever the hell his name is, their name is. Um, mm. some, somehow these people have been put on the forefront that in my opinion, don't belong there. Yeah. But, but again, I'm for free speech. I'm for, I'm for all of it. Every time they make content, it just makes, it gives me opportunity to create more content back. So for me, it's, it's not only job security. Uh, mm. it's also, it's, it's when somebody like that says what I, what I'm like, people like me, Blair Buck, you know, we, we, we think is ignorant or stupid. doesn't make sense. It gives, I'm glad that they're able to, it, no matter how much I disagree with them, I'm glad they're able to say it freely because mm. it gives somebody that's, in my opinion, more sane, the opportunity to come on and correct them. Mm. You know? And that is, that is like that, that is a truly properly liberal principle yes. that you that yes. you just espouse you know it's mm -hmm. that old saying it's often attributed to voltaire you know i don't yeah. agree with what you say but i will i will fight defend your right to defend mm -hmm. your right yes. to say it and like you mentioned earlier on that that that's what the left the liberals the true liberals used to be all about it was about right. free speech and, and freedom of expression and mm -hmm. live and let live and it was the right wing like the 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 i guess you call them the kind of virulent christian right instead of the it 90s. was about religion back then that 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 thwarted growth. Uh, is that the right mm. word? Thwarted growth. Uh, progress that, that, stu that stunted growth and progress. It, yeah, actual progression, um, progressivism and such. But yeah, it's like oh, you can't think this way because we're religious. Or you can't be gay because you were. That's how mm. it was back then. 
or yeah, you know that's, can't that's, listen that's to this a, music you can't listen to this music because yeah, people satanic. couldn't yeah. listen people can't yeah people listen to Marilyn people weren't letting their kids listen to Marilyn Manson because they were yeah. looking at the devil or something <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, and he's and a little crazy but he's not the devil you know he's like, not the devil and then there no was and he's let him live let him live and let live his music don't listen to it if you don't want to yeah if you don't like it don't don't listen that's to it. it that's it exactly where do you I what I want to know and I can't figure it out like where and why do you think that shift happened? Because there are positions now that the right typically holds, particularly on things like freedom of speech, mm -hmm. that were the left wing positions. Yeah, it's weird. Not I, that I long honestly, ago. No, I have no idea how that how that shifted that much that quickly. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. I think what I think actually happened. I don't think it, anything really shifted. Like. I don't know how to, how, let me try to explain this. I don't know if I'm going to say it in the right way. I don't think, I don't think the, the, it's not that the, the, it's not that the beliefs of the party switched because they did, but that's, that's not what happened at first. Mm. I think the people representing and going into certain, certain uh, positions of power yeah. within those parties were different than what people normally expect like trump came in and he was the first republican candidate to promote gay rights you know yeah. like he literally was the first one to come on stage with the gay flag what regardless of what people want to say about him he was the mm. first one to do that obama didn't even do that not even in his wow. first term was for gay marriage obama waited till second term so when it became 20, you know trendy with the 2011 with the 2011 or 2012 it was i can't remember i think it was 2012 we had gay right gay, gay marriage in the country in the u.s finally yeah. yeah, yeah, when it was popular, exactly. Democrats weren't for that. So I think it's it was this weird shift in in where people I, I think it was more that people people didn't want how do I say this? It was less about conservatism in a sense of socially conservatism. I think mm -hmm. the people that are that are that are socially conservative are still on the far right. Yeah. But I think the people that were crazy progressive were all the way far left and the people in the middle were just kind of like and, and most of the people i've learned are in the middle i'm mm -hmm. in the middle most people are in the middle and i think most of the people didn't want socialism and communism and no. they didn't want to be told what to do and they realized that fairly early on earlier than i did and the only people that were making more sense were the people on the right it doesn't mean that they had conservative views like those people if they did the people on the right, which I don't think people on the right have actual much conservatism socially anymore. Mm. I mean, this is America. Yeah, it, yeah it's, this it, is America. It's, Fiscally yeah, exactly. conservative, and yeah, but like socially, I don't think most people care. No matter yeah. how Donald Trump right wing you are, um, unless you're like you know like a hick from like I don't know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Mississippi. Unless, but like, unless, you, listen, I went to Mississippi. Everyone was real nice. So well, exactly. To that. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't think there are that many people who are virulently homophobic. There's there. really not. Like, there's, there's really, really not. not. There are people who, for religious reasons, um, don't approve of mm -hmm. of being gay. Um, but yeah. they don't hate gay people. They <laughs> just are like. Yeah, do you know what I? They don't. No, I'm you know, listening. I'm listening. I'm listening to you. Somebody said us, us hicks don't care either. <laughs> I mean, yeah. well no 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 exactly that that's what yeah, that's yeah. what i mean like you, you know even um amongst people who are and you know these are these are people mm. i defend you know there are so many people who are are stereotyped as oh you live in a certain area so you must be like you know a terrible kind right. of fascist racist it's like well no no they're not they they, they generally they they actually don't care that much about you mm -mm. <laughs> so, they really you know, don't they want to they really they don't. want what everyone wants which is to be and left alone to live their I life and I didn't, and I listen, I didn't realize that I was one of those people that lived in New York my whole life. If you look at my timeline, I know, I know people are going to say, oh, she just flipped because there was money or something. Well, I don't know what the hell that they're going to say. Me. But it's like, if you listen, <laughs> like, if you look at my timeline, I moved to Florida. Yeah. And Florida is a red state. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Fort Lauderdale and, and Miami and Fort Lauderdale turned red around the time I moved there. And I was meeting people and learning about a different culture back then. And this was 2018, 2019. And then I moved back to New York in 2020. But I had those two, three years that I was like frequenting South Florida and Florida in general to learn a different way of life, right? And yeah. a different a different political way of life anyway, different political view. I had mm. never seen, like I didn't understand why people wanted guns so badly, wanted gun rights. I really didn't. 
I, I understand why people wanted to protect themselves because I'm from, you know, a big city. Yeah. Uh, but until I, I started talking to, you know, DC Drano, Rogan and, and Grant and David Leatherwood, this was in 2020. Um, I didn't really realize how important the those conservative uh, those conservative morals, principles principles, principles yeah. were. You know, mm. I was making friends. Somebody said Florida alligators guns. Yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> Florida alligators guns. I love it. That's pretty much yeah. <laughs> and the sense you know thunderstorms in the summer, mm. everyday thunderstorms. Um, but yeah, like I I realized how different it was living in a in a red state. I li the funny thing is I lived in a blue city my whole life, but my neighborhood the neighborhoods I lived in were fairly like purple reddish. But oh, that's interesting. But not socially, not socially. But I also never knew because no one talked about it in the neighborhood. Everyone yeah. was very quiet. Everyone because everyone was nice. Like I said, nobody really cares. I wouldn't have no. known. No, it's not like oh that guy's an evil Republican. <laughs> like that's literally, <laughs> it's not how it is. At least where, where I grew up, it's not. Nobody cares. Well, Everybody just wants to live. You know, everyone wants their. Mo most people from what I from what I remember in my old neighborhood, most people just don't want their their hard on money taken away, like Biden with with all this student debt. Oh my you know? god! Yeah, t what is your opinion on that? Because that was my, going absolutely mad on Twitter. I, I think I I think I have a very very uh very not very good opinion. I have a very imp important opinion. A solid opinion. A solid. Well, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll explain why, and then you tell me what mm -hmm. the word would be. But I am one of those people, technically, that if I didn't succeed, could have been one of those people that was like, oh, well, I didn't get, you know, I, I have all this debt. Because I'm, okay, my point is, I went to art school. I yeah. studied art. So I am one of the, I am, I am a, a prime example of what the right would use when talking about this issue. Well, she studied art. She didn't make anything of herself. Why should I have to pay for her debt? Yet I still believe in what the right preaches. I made something of myself. And even if I didn't, I would have still paid that money off mm -hmm. because it's my debt that I acquired. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, th I think that's why my, my opinion is, I would say more important than it, it makes sense to hear my opinion over others. Cause I would be one of those, a nuanced opinion. There you go. The nuanced Some, opinion. There you exactly. go. Perfect. Somebody said that. Perfect. Yeah. Because I would be the example that people on the right would use. And I still yeah. believe in what they're saying. Yeah. Like I literally went to a private art school. Uh, I did really well and I'm doing really well with my degree, but the majority of people I went to school with probably did not, you know, I think, I think yeah. they said like one out of a hundred people actually do what, what, you know, their career is or what their career, what their career wants to be. They graduated from my school. It's hard to make it as an artist, you know, very, it very is. difficult. Yeah. Well, it is, it is like totally. I mean, um, but if I did, like I said, if I didn't make it, I was not going to put that, burden on, on somebody else no. i'm not no that's not how i was raised i was raised you you bust your ass you work hard you pay off the shit you pay your shit off that's it exactly that's it. i saw i exactly. saw a tweet it's, i saw a tweet going around and i put my own spin on it and, and whatever it didn't perform well but <laughs> I, 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 it, it was like the same people that are claiming my body my choice are saying my my loans your your payment you know like you have yeah. to pay my loans and it's like no it's like my body my choice because you know i'm pro-choice Mm -hmm. Under certain circumstances, of course, not every under every circumstance. But mm -hmm. I'm also like, yeah, if you want your body, your choice, you should you should have the same con uh, the same mentality when it comes to your student loans. Your choice, mm. it's your choice. You wanted to go to that school, you paid those you pay those loans back. You know, yeah, that's simple. Yeah, I think I think that I think that makes sense, and it's interesting looking at it from an Australian perspective because we have a, a student loan system in our country as well but it's all set up by the government and they call it HEX or HELP, Higher Education Loan Program, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, it is I, I think, if you're looking for like a balanced way to organize university education and student loans, it's probably up there. Um, you know, we live in a welfare state, we pay a lot of tax. So you want something back for your tax dollars, but basically um, the degrees are a lot cheaper than they are in America because the government subsidizes, I think half, they have what they call okay. Commonwealth supported places, not every university, but most of them. Um, and you can borrow the amount off the government and it doesn't accrue any interest. Um, oh, that's it, yeah, not at all. It goes up with inflation, but everything right. does. Um, and they don't come after you for it. 
uh, which is great. So you don't have like the debt collectors knocking on your door for the yep. for the for the debt, um, which is good. And then it comes out. You don't have to consciously pay it off. It comes out of your income like tax every year. There's certain thresholds oh. you meet, so you know exactly how much you're going to pay, and you can make depending on how much payments. you make. Depending okay. on exactly depending how much you That's, make. That and makes me I like that. As long as you're still paying it back, like it yeah. makes sense. Oh yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's there's a lot of like. Huge, as there is in every country, there's huge amounts of unpaid student loans in Australia. Like, uh, uh, like even though it's good from a student perspective, I don't actually know if it's a sustainable system because if you yeah, continue for your whole life to earn underneath that threshold, which is I think like I don't know forty two thousand dollars a year, which is like thirty thousand US, which if yeah, you don't have a lot of expenses, you can probably get minimum by wage. On that. Yeah, it's yeah, minimum yeah. wage lower than maybe eh, maybe about this time it might might be minimum wage thirty five k or something here. Yeah. yeah, something something yeah. like that. Yeah, then you're never going to pay that loan back. So no. how do you how, how do you think that would go down if, if Biden proposed something like that in America? I don't know. It, what's interesting, and I watched Ben Shapiro's episode on this today. Yeah. Because I, I didn't know about, about the I don't know about half the stuff he talks about, which is why I watch him. Mm. But he said the people that are defending Biden for this, uh, for, the, for the student loan um, relief that he's doing, was it like $15,000, whatever it is, yeah, he said it's a whole bunch of bullshit anyway because the only people that he can relieve are those who were uh, publicly given those those grants or whatever or, or the, mm. the, the, the the whatever it is the publicly given grants and stuff. Um, because if it's a private company, he said, the government can't touch it, the government can't force it. And he said, what did he say? He said the, uh, that that private companies which is what all my loans were i believe i think i all had private loan yeah. i had private loans yeah most people do because most people aren't going to harvard law right most people exactly. because this is america most people are going to study things that they enjoy and if you're a public co what did he say i can't remember right now if you're if you're a private company you're less likely to give somebody a loan that you don't think you'll get the money back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's it's not going to affect the private companies anyway because they wouldn't have given these loans out in the first place is what I'm trying to say. No, if they didn't think they could get the money back from, yeah. from well, these people. So it, it, this is kind of just, he said it, it, it Joe Biden is actually not going to help them as many people as he said. Then it's kind of no. just like a, a virtue signal again, yeah. Because again, most of the people that are in debt really, that are in debt programs wouldn't have gotten help from these private companies anyway. And those are the only ones they can't touch. Like I wow. Said. Yeah. And, and that's, I, I, so that's like the most Democrat thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. We're going to help everyone. No, yeah. I mean, it's like, we're going to help everyone, but actually, no, we're only going to help. Pell, like, yes. Somebody people. said Pell Grants, Pell Grants versus private loans. Yes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's yeah, been so long uh, yeah. since I went to college and I paid off my loans years ago. <laughs> I can't remember the names of it, but yeah. Yeah. Like I had only private loans. Most people, most people that, like I said, I went to a good school, so I yeah. had I, I was it was easy for me to get private loans, even though it was an art school. It's a it's a great it's a it's a top ten art school. Like it's one of the best. In, it's it was like number five in the country when I went. That's incredible. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it was like the Princeton, like Princeton of art schools. Uh, so people get even though even though they might not come out and do what they no do what they want to do. Those people that go to those types of private schools yeah. are usually the types of people that will pay the loans back. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh yeah. Because to get into that school, you had to be a good student in the first place, not a lazy shit that no. is going to major in gender studies. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that, that was socialist, right? That's not a socialist frame of mind. That's a capitalist frame of mind. I want to be the best. I want to do well. I want to, I, I want to, you know, make, not about making money, but it's about wanting to do well in your field. It's a capitalist yeah, mindset. Yeah. You can't socialism just go there is, I, I waft around. Right. Socialism to me is more like, no matter how bad I am at it, I'm still gonna have a job. Like that's yeah. kind of that's kind of the mindset to me. <laughs> yeah, and it's like that's not how people that go to that went to my college thought. I mean, some of no. them obviously. There's always a few of them, but majority of people worked very hard. They just they weren't very good at what they did, but they worked hard. You know, it's interesting that there are there seem to be quite a lot of young people now who are though totally of that mind, mindset. They love the idea of socialism because it means it doesn't matter how bad I am at it, I'll I'll always have a job. Uh, and I'm not sure if that is, I don't know if, it, if it's unique to America. I think there's a bit of it in Australia. Um, like, to be fair, it is, it is quite difficult to survive 
nowadays. So I don't know. Do you think these kids are just frustrated or are they lazy or is it a combination of both. the two? I think it's both. Both. 100% both. Absolutely. And Marushka, um, if I said that right, Marusha? Marusha? Marusha, yeah. Marusha. Uh, I went to Pratt. Uh, I did get into SVA, but I decided not to go there. And SCAD is a really good school. Uh, my One of my really good friends went there. She studied oil painting and she is oh, a burlesque. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I made a video with her. She's a burlesque dancer and a classically trained oil painter. So Savannah College of Art and Design is a really, really good school. Uh, that is the most bohemian, very good beautifully bohemian yeah. thing I've ever heard. She is a burlesque <laughs> dancer who was a, a classically oil trained oil painter. Yeah. Oh my God, you could, you could just stick that in Moulin Rouge. I know. Right now. She's great. She's great. She's fantastic. Yeah. And she's uh, she's still living in Savannah. So she's she's yeah, she's doing well. And That's she's based, crazy. which is crazy. Because you look oh at my her. Oh, she's not you, a lefty. You would not, you would never think. And you look at her, you're like, oh my God, she's like, you know, crazy lefty. Nope. She she red pilled the hell out of me. Oh Can't say her God. name publicly, but yeah, yeah, yeah. She red pilled the hell out of me. Well, good mm -hmm. for her. I love, I love, I love the based artists. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. reckon there are actually more than than let on i mean because i come from a, a theater background a musical theater background oh yeah we talked and, about this yeah 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 mm -hmm. and that is i think particularly in australia like it is full of the the worst kind of regressive leftists you will ever find mm -hmm. because not only are they mean because there's, I mean, like it, it's very, very hard to get work as an actor. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of competition. There's very, very little work, particularly in Australia. It just, it makes people mean, mean of spirit and mean of manner, basically. Oh yeah. I mean, not only they mean, yeah. it's just like LA. Same thing. It's, it's exactly. just a horrible, vindictive. I'm gonna step on you if you don't help me, and I'm gonna use you. It's, that's that's. And I'm gonna be nice LA. to your face the whole time. Yep. I'm gonna be lovely Absolutely. to you. Oh my god. No, it's the same thing. They're not only are they mean, they're also stupid. Like really, really stupid. Um, because they have absolutely no other educational life experience um, than sort of what they do. And they always kind of hang around the same people. And it becomes like this disgusting cesspool of nastiness and woke activism. And I used yeah. to fight with them all the time on Facebook, like, you know, 2013 and 2014. And I used to, I used to be so astounded with how mean they would be. Like people I'd known for like 10 years would like turn on a dime the minute I gave a different political opinion. And mm -hmm. that, that was sort of my introduction to the regressive left. Only I wasn't, yeah. you know, like well, I didn't really know what the culture war, the culture war was back then because it wasn't as big. But there mm -hmm. were always like a few who would sort of privately agree with me, like whether they'd send me a message or I'd see them at work yeah. and we'd have a chat and mm -hmm. they'd say, look, I actually, I actually kind of agree with you on feminism, but like, I didn't feel I like I could really say Yeah, I can't say mm -hmm. anything. I really respect uh, no. you for saying stuff, but yeah. you know, I, I can't say anything. I reckon there are more artists like that than we think because surely wokeism is a total inhibitor to self-expression, isn't it? Which is not what you want yes. as an artist. Yes, I agree. And yes, Joseph, I I did do a video with two guys in guns. That was Grant and Rogan uh, a few years ago when I moved to, to Florida. I filmed a video with them about uh, gun rights and why it's actually an LGBT issue. Because oh. it's a, a women's issue and a gay issue, yeah. Explain that. I didn't see that video. It How was, uh, I mean, it, it was it was a long video because we were talking more about guns than anything else because I was like, ooh, yeah. what's this? <laughs> what's a gun? Yeah. Yeah, ooh. Uh, first time I shot guns, but um, no, I was in Texas and then I came back and I shot guns with, with in Florida. But mm. um, first time I shot guns was with, with, with our friend Sydney. But oh, cute. The, the base, the basis of uh, the argument for them is people, minorities, people that are less likely uh, to to feel safe or to actually be safe deserve deserve uh, an equalizer, deserve an equalizer. Mm. So that's gay gay men, lesbian women, uh, trans people black people you know any any minority women especially women aren't a minority i think there's more women in the world than men but minority in a sense that they are the weaker physically weaker sex uh it makes sense for it makes sense to me why women would want to to be gun owners it does mm. and and it took me it took me like i said it took me a minute um it took me a minute to not, like, and a minute, like, I, should, I should say, it took me literally a minute. <laughs> like they sat down <laughs> with me and they were like, listen, this is this, this, this. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. Like, you know, it, within an hour they had, they, they had convinced me why this was so important. 
It's just mm. that the leftists don't even give you the chance to explain your arguments, right? Mm. They, they, they don't. Even, what do they say? As soon as you, as soon as you have a different opinion, I don't want to hear it. 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 I don't want to. Yeah. No, 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 no. They, that's what they do. And in the videos, like Fleckus does, uh, who else does it? Um, not Ben Shapiro. Prager U does a lot of videos like that. Uh, Ben, what's his name? Not Ben Shapiro. Um, what's his name? Oh. I can't think of his name. What's the, the handsome guy? What's his name? Oh God, no! I know who you mean. His I can't think of his. Me. Yeah, I know who. You I mean. can't think of his name. Yeah. Matt. Matt. Something. I think his name is. Mm. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of his no, name. No, Matt Walsh. No, Matt Walsh. No, not Matt Walsh. No. The other guy. I can't think of his name. But mm. he does videos where he goes out in the street and talks to people, and and nine out of ten times. Oh, they, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? They, yeah, they, yeah. They, they're, they're just like, no, I don't want to talk to you Is it Mark anymore. Dice? Mark no. Dice? I can't think of his name. <laughs> not Matt Walsh. No. Oh, this is going to bother me now. One not of the guys Benjamin Boyce. No, not Benjamin Boyce. Oh, what the hell is his name? Mm. He's on Prager U and he does the uh, uh, the black girl. He does the videos with the black girl. Emil, Emila. No, not Steven Crowder. Oh, my God. This is going to bother me now. <laughs> anyway, I'll yeah. send you the that, video. That, that, that's competition for the chat if you can if yeah, you can yeah. please figure it out help us figure it out, figure the it chat. out. He's, he's a handsome out. he's a handsome guy he's got no he's not it's not Stephen crowder he's got glasses half the time um will yes will that's his name will, will um channel will chamberlain will something like that will wit will, will wit he was gonna get it i knew somebody was gonna get it. He, he does videos with the girl amala i believe her mm -hmm. name is she's awesome too florida girl i think she lives in la now but you know she's doing well out there with him, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they 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 do those types of videos too. And, and nine out of ten times, these 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 far leftists, as soon as they as soon as they realize that they're they're not in agreement with, because if they don't know who he is, you know, like yeah. if, if you obviously they know people know Stephen Crab, they won't even bother coming after no, him. No, of course not. They'll just see you're a racist. And right, like, exactly, away. far away. Exactly. Somebody said the chat knows all. Yes, they do. Yes, you guys. The chat you. always does. Yes. Yeah, they, I knew they'd figure it out before we would. Uh, mm. Yeah, but nine out of ten times, these people they won't. Oh, it's Amala. Okay, Amala, got it. Yeah, nine out of ten times, they won't even. They won't even bother. They're just like, nope, I don't want to hear you anymore, and they will walk away. And then mm. we'll stand in there like. <laughs> argument like i don't have a, like, I know. it's I don't so funny it's so funny that complex isn't it because i have found that like almost to the point of parody with their left they are just so completely not interested yeah. that's why they that's why they interrupt like the minute you start to make a point they interrupt with mm -hmm. something and they'll be like mm -hmm. why are you interrupting me and it's like i'm just i'm just into interjecting because it's like no you just you don't you don't want to hear the point. I, mean, I don't know if you notice this, but I notice they will proudly say they don't consume material from various media outlets. Like they will proudly say that they don't yeah. watch Fox News and they will proudly say they don't read Breitbart or the Daily Wire. But I don't read that white supremacist material. Oh, and like really the, the really yeah. best example of that um, or a good example was I, I write articles uh, for Sky News Australia. Right. And I had a guy like reply to one the tweet of one of my articles on Twitter going, you know, oh, Daisy Cousins, you know, writes another shitty article. Good thing I won't read it. And I couldn't resist. And oh, I reached out my God. and I said, how do you know I write shitty articles if, if, if you, you don't, don't read, read them? <laughs> <laughs> it's literally, it's bizarre. It's bizarre because I'm not going to go into specifics, but it's it's so Bizarre is probably the best word I can use. They literally, they 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 kill their arguments before they, there's an argument to make, mm. just by doing stuff like that. Like somebody had made uh, a post about me recently, saying that mm. I was something, and literally in the post that he made, it proves that I am not that thing. Yeah. Yet people are still retweeting and believing that he said that thing about me. Does that make sense? <laughs> but like, it's literally right there showing, proving in, in the, the direct messages that he posted. It shows that I had, you know, whatever it was, but it's proven in the texts that he, that he posted pu publicly, which is like not my favorite thing when people post direct messages, but it proves it and people are still just not reading it and just believing whatever he says. Crazy. Yeah. It's, Crazy. I don't know. It's, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. Like, uh, Callum and I are currently watching a show called The Gilded Age, which is like Downton Abbey, but for New York in the 1880s. And it's like a friggin' amazing oh. and everyone should watch it, by the way. It's so good. But there's this line <clears throat> that um, Christine Baranski is in it and she said she's playing sort of an, an older kind of old money 
you know, society lady. And she okay. says, um, no, I, like someone's trying to tell us something. She says, no, no, I'm not interested in facts, not when they interfere with my beliefs. And I looked at Callum, I'm like, oh my God, that's it's happening now. <laughs> that's history, the other year. history repeats itself. His, that's what they say. History will repeat itself if we don't learn. Yeah, that's, that's why right. we talk about 1984 so much. And we talk about the book. You yes. know, it's not history, but it c can be. <laughs> you know, exactly. if you don't learn from the damn book. Uh, oh, exactly. Know? It was not. It was not meant to be um, an instruction manual, so to right. speak. Right. Well, exactly. 1984 was not meant to be an instruction manual. Look, I wanted to ask you actually um, about speaking of 1984 and you know big government surveillance and inter mm -hmm. interference. I'm not sure if you saw this, but Mark Zuckerberg was on Joe Rogan's podcast. I saw uh, a very recently. small clip. Yes, yeah, I, and I saw a very small clip. He had Joe Rogan, and I love Joe Rogan's face because he just sort of eyeballed Zuckerberg when he asked him these questions. Mm -hmm. And he just said, uh, he got it out of him that um, the Hunter Biden, and we have to be careful what we say here because we know how touchy YouTube is with discussion of the 2020 election. So mm -hmm. YouTube overlords, mea culpa, but we're going to talk about this. Um, he said that the FBI, Zuckerberg said, um, in the seven days prior to, to the 2020 election, the FBI, like, Prior to that, had said, we think there's going to be like a, a Russian. A Russian. Mm -hmm. They blamed it on the Russians again. Yep. They blamed, it on, the they blamed it on the Russians. Yeah. And then Zuckerberg was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then the Hunter Biden laptop story popped up. And we yeah. figured that that was part of the Russian. The Russian dump. collusion where we, so we suppressed it. Yep. So we suppressed well, he, it for seven he days. Admitted, he admitted it, but he said, oh, but it was because of Russia, basically. But at least oh, he admitted my it. God. At least he admitted it. That's, that's definitely progress. Is that, do you think, an example of, as Time Magazine put it, the, the well-funded cabal that fortified the, the 2020 the election. U.S. election? I think so. I think mm. so, absolutely. I think it proves, it doesn't prove that they cheated to win. It proves that they manipulated media to win. Mm. Uh, although I think they cheated as well. But, <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's been evidence that there was some cheating at least, right? There's, like, video yeah. evidence of it. Yeah, but generally is in American yeah. elections anyway. You right, know, I don't, right, I don't right. know why it's controversial to suggest that anyone cheats. They were saying that about election. Trump when he won. Oh, he cheated. I, so I don't I know. know why it's such a big deal that you know. Yeah, that yeah. that's what's that's what's so weird. It shows how like totally one sided this whole thing is. And whatever anyone thinks of Trump, um, I said this with Sydney. We both said last weekend that he was up against forces that I don't think any normal person can even comprehend like he had he had forces working against him that were just completely extraordinary the girl and like yeah no, no no you go no i was gonna say the girl that red uh, red pilled me showed me a documentary about all of this and i will tell you what it's called after the stream uh but it's a very 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 scary documentary and i will say i watched it three years ago and a lot of the things that they talked about then have come true so <gasps> It just makes me believe that a lot of the things in the documentary that haven't come true will come true or are true, uh, including the the thing about the Ashley Biden diary. Oh, oh, I don't know if they mentioned that specifically, yeah. but a lot of creepy shit like that they talk about. And it's like, mm -hmm. mm, just saying, if that if, if half of it's true, even if even if a tenth of it is true, I would be very, very afraid to be Donald Trump or to or to mention mm -hmm. to, to be anybody remotely affiliated with with him because he's the one trying to take down these terrible people mm. you know there's like you said the cabal so the, the well-founded yeah. cabal yeah Don't, oh my god i loved it when that time magazine article came out because um you know there was discussion of the 2020 election like all that stuff about like the the vote the vote flipping with dominion like i think that was a yeah, ruse that, that the Republicans bought into. I think that was disinformation yeah, I don't, I don't fed think, to the Trumps. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think that many of that, that, that much of that stuff. I, no. I, I can't tell you. If you're smart, it includes one of the words we just said. Uh, you'll figure it out. But I don't want to say it publicly because I don't want to get harassed. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, yeah, in like, the video, in the, when you watch it, you'll understand why. Exactly. So, uh, Ariel is encrypting her messaging in here. Yeah. It's incentive to watch the live stream back. But, um, you know, when it came to that election, um, I don't understand why it's controversial to discuss things like the sort of manipulation of messaging that was yeah. mentioned in the Time mm -hmm. magazine article or like just the normal stuff that goes on 
with US elections because I mean we remember how it's okay to discuss cheating in the 2016 election like they had a two year inquiry into the into the 2016 election but yeah you you can't say the same thing about the 2020 about, election about, it's a bit, I know they can't bit nope. weird isn't yeah. it yeah yeah you can't you can't any anything that Hunter Biden or Joe Biden anything that they do just because they're a democrat or because they're progressive they get a free pass mm. And well, that was what um oh no you go what were you saying sorry i'm interrupting no no you're not you're fine you can interrupt me as much as you want i was just gonna say the same thing goes for the gay community and trans people it's like just because we're gay or trans we're getting a free pass that's not equality and i will stand against that as a gay person mm -hmm. i will yeah i want i want to be treated equally i want to be treated fairly not differently not differently if that not less than or worse not better than not worse than yeah which yeah. is the difference isn't it between equity and equality like P yes, equity yes. is a quality of outcome, equality is a quality of opportunity. Opportunity, right. Do you think there's been a bit of uh, deliberate conflating of those two concepts by the left? I th Yes, but I also think that it's more so an overcorrection than conflating the two words. I think people don't even think about the two words and what they mean. I think they just care about correcting the wrongs that, that the government has done in, regarding, in, in regards to racism an actual actual racism actual homophobia actual transphobia actual misogyny they're trying to correct it all but they're just they've just gone so far past correction that it's become like you said uh it's not the uh, regressive it's regressive yeah. now it's not progressive anymore it's regressive mm. That's my honest to God, my favorite name for the wokies is the regressive left. That's a, like it's not... a great word of putting it's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, how about we have a little look at some of these super chats yeah, that are up it. here? Um, the pendulum so swing. Yes. Somebody said Mar Marusha said Marusha said, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll have a the pendulum swing is exactly right. Yep. Uh, we'll it's, have it's a look at too some. Too far the other way, yeah. Mm, which is a, and and the thing is like eventually it will It'll have to swing back <laughs> at some point. It is. It already is. So. It already is. Yeah. 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 Um, Janine Klimt, that is an adorable super sticker. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, oh, this is interesting. This was when we were talking about how you were saying that women, it's kind of easiest to bully women. And Moonfield Rational Optic says, is it easier to bully them or to persuade slash manipulate? What do you think? Ooh. Both. Mm. I think both, but I understand his, I'm assuming he's a man. I think I, I understand his point. Uh, I do think it's generally, not always, generally easier to bully women. But you know what? Manipulating is bullying. That's it's, true. It's, it's, it's mentally bullying. So either way, <laughs> in my opinion, anyway, you're manipulating somebody, you're, you're taking advantage of them, you're bullying them. Yeah. Which is actually, again, back on the point about guns and, and women. Um, I meant to raise something there because... That's sort of like, you know, the in Australia a couple of years ago, there were a number of instances of young women being raped and killed on the street. Um, and that is a very unusual happenstance because, as we know, women are in more danger in domestic environments of, of rape and assault than they are on the street, interestingly enough. And there was this debate in Australia about whether or not women should be allowed to carry tasers um, or pepper spray, because, you know, in Australia, we have really strict gun laws, you can't, uh, right. the right to self defense in terms of shooting someone does not exist here, you can't really own them. It's like, you, the, the population is disarmed. But people were talking about um, how women should have tasers. And it was that time I thought that guns should be a feminist issue. Yeah, they should be a feminist issue because they are kind of the the great equalizer. The great, that's between, what they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you think, isn't it? It is now. Yeah, that's that's what Grant and Rogan taught me, uh, that it's it's important for women to carry because not, nine, nine out of ten times a man will be stronger. But if you both have guns, it's equalized. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, it's the great equalizer. So and he said anyone that's a minority, it should be a minority issue. Not mm -hmm. in, in not in quantity minority in uh, lacking rights or lacking safety, like less likely to be safe minority that's what my that's how i'm using the word minority in this case that's a great youtube video type guns are a feminist issue i should make it Ooh, video do that called... please do that video yeah. i should do that video i, I have the video perfect person guns. for you too i have the perfect oh, really? person for you yeah she's a professional i don't know if i'm gonna say it right rifle shooter or something like Marksman. she goes on like 
Yeah, she goes on like tournaments. She's in Florida. She's in St. Pete, I believe. She goes on t- tournaments and such, and and like shoots guns for a living. Yeah, it's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, well, that's the great. thing. Um, I came around to. I, I mean, I'm still an Australian, so I instinctively have an awareness of guns in Australia. That's not a, not all Australians, but culturally, Australians are sort of wary. We look at guns and think, oh, that's something that could potentially kill me. That the, the culture is just like it's right. extremely different, even even amongst of conservatives. Course. Yeah, um, but. And what? that's that's an accurate statement. It is something that yeah. like, could potentially, but it also potentially can save you, right? So exactly. It's, it's, you have to look. You have, you have to be able to look at it from both perspectives. Yeah, exactly. And um, when I I did the same thing as you, I educated myself on guns because I I said some stuff about the Second Amendment that wasn't sort of that well thought out on television. And I got called out on it by a number of my, very nicely, my American subscribers were like, we, we love you, Daisy, but we disagree with you for these reasons. Um, and I was contacted by a guy who was like, how about you come to my shooting range in Brisbane and we shoot some guns, oh, maybe I'll change your mind. And um, yeah, that was how I sort of was like, ah, yeah. broadened my horizons. But she yeah, pointed yeah. out that for, um, recreational shooting is very equalizing because it's one of the only sports where men and women can compete equally against each other. That's a, that's a good way of putting it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's, I'm trying to think unless it's like chess <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or like, yeah, I mean, I was going to say bowling now because men are generally stronger. They have heavier balls and they're going to generally yeah. knock down more pins. Uh, yeah. A gun, it's, it's your finger strength. I mean, everybody can, you know, so, everyone can pull the trigger. Yeah. Everybody can pull the trigger equally. Yeah. That's interesting. There we go. That's all going into the video. Gun, yeah. Guns are a feminist okay. issue. I love it. I love it. Um, Marusha, thank you for yours. Um, Marusha has also said, we talk of gay pride, but what about gay humility? What do you think of that? Gay pride for me doesn't mean we're proud to be gay. It means, I mean, that's how people, that's how some people, you're right. That's how some people will use it. (laughs) Um, did you burn yourself? You're right. No, no, it's cold at the moment. I'm drinking cold tea. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I would say what gay pride used to mean and what how how i how i use that term means it to me it means we're we're proud of being who we are regardless of potential consequences mm. and at the time when i came out there were no there weren't was no uh, marriage equality uh there was no uh i mean back we're talking about in, in stonewall 1969 when, when stonewall happened in new york city gay pride was wasn't like we're proud to be gay we're proud to like women that that's not what gay pride was it's like i don't know if i can curse you shall say f you this Mm. is who i am you know i'm gonna be proud of of who i am regardless if you think it's it's if regardless if you think it's bad regardless if i not if i get beaten up for it regardless if the law sees me as as unequal that's what gay pride really meant and what mm. I think it should mean, it doesn't actually mean we're proud of being gay because then if, if for that case, then you'd be like, yeah, then have straight pride. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. But that, but that's not what my argument for the term means, but that, that is what a lot of people, that is how a lot of gay people and I should, I should say more queer people, uh, the Gen Zers use that term. Now it's like, we're proud of being like, we're proud of our homosexuality. It's like, no, that's not, which is why people came back and were like, well, we're proud to be straight. And I, and I was like, I understand why they threw a straight pride parade. I get it. Mm. Because that's based on the new definition of what gay pride was, not the old definition of what gay pride is. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a really yeah. interesting yeah. point. Like the, the word has kind of evolved Shame. with the activists yeah. to be less, less sort of symbolic and esoteric and like more about literal more literal which sort of again le- leaves them sort of open to criticism hence you know it leaves it open to people kind of you know hijacking it and having a straight pride exactly and all that kind of exactly. stuff exactly exactly got it but must it, it, drive you yeah. guys nuts this new activism like you and bach and people of you know your generation and mindset it must drive you insane it, it drives me nuts it drives me nuts but I, I i don't like i said i don't blame straight people for for claiming that 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 what was it in Boston? I think they had a straight pride parade or something. Yeah, I, mean, something I don't think of like course that. it would be. It would be yeah. It would be in like one of the wokest cities, <laughs> uh, which was even more of a troll thing to do. Totally. Um, but yeah, like it, it makes sense because the, it, it in their eyes they're just like, well, this is what you're saying. You're proud to be gay. I'm proud to be straight. How is that wrong? We're proud of our sexual orientation. It's like, 
yes, I get it. Like I didn't, I didn't come after the straight people for for having a straight pride parade because I understood why they did it. Yeah, exactly. And did you remember? Actually, this was another kind of reaction to the the activism. Was remember the hashtag super straight trend that went around? Like it was it was at the time when um, the internet culture was there's all these different types of sexualities, like dissecting and dissecting, and you know it all gets you know spewed about on TikTok. And so some bright spark said, okay, well if you're going to talk about all these different sexualities. Um, I'm hashtag super straight and yep. um, that, I love yeah. that guy. I love that guy. Yeah. And it trended and people yep. got so annoyed and the camera but he, was but like, he, he was just using their own logic. He was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, why, why are you hating on a guy just for, for simply spewing your own logic back at you? Yeah. I, I don't understand why, why it's so wrong having like a hashtag super straight sexuality because there are some mm -hmm. there are some people who are super straight like you know yeah. human sexuality is it is it is actually is a spectrum of course. um you know people often put somewhere in the middle and there are some people who are super straight <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm, I'm i'm a super lesbian like i don't think I, I i no i don't think i know i could not be with a trans woman or anyone that identified as a, as a woman that had that did not have a vagina and mm. i couldn't do it doesn't mean I couldn't be attracted to somebody. Like, I could be attracted to physical features, but once I got to that, I'd be like, "Ooh, you know, mm. Miss, that make me super gay." Key ingredient. <laughs> no, it's like right. It's right. It's like the, the the things that you have literally have sex with apparently mean nothing to progressives these days. The thing no, it's all in, in, in regards to sexual orientation it means nothing. The things that you yeah. literally have sex with. That's insane. It's it's all about ideology. <laughs> mm -hmm. here is ashley claire that is a lovely comment she says i look forward to videos from both of you love you all ah thank you Aww, ashley sweet. very sweet a lovely one from i says stay brave ladies thank you very much i i love these nice ones <laughs> don't, don't, don't you love them ariella they're nice I, to be I, I haven't seen any negative comments maybe one maybe one but maybe everyone one else has been very nice I generally attract really nice people to my mm -hmm. live streams. Like it is so It must so be because rare. you're so proper. Stop <laughs> it! I'm kidding. Stop it! I love you. I can't. I, I. I. Sometimes I'm not proper. Sometimes I. Sometimes I swear and say dreadful things in my live streams. But when you get pissed you know, off, when I get when I get pissed, you gotta off, get a really pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you have to get me very angry. Um, and then mandatory carry says hashtag keep fighting both of you. Well, Absolutely. we will indeed. We will indeed keep fighting. <laughs> We will always. Said, men space. have heavier balls. That was very, very presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> men do have heavier balls. <laughs> Listen, some women might have heavier balls. I don't know. Yeah, you know, you know. We who, don't who, know who these days. No, no, no. Exactly. Um. Oh, what's section two thirty? Oh, yeah. We might talk a chat about that another time. Um, Ariel, thank you so much for joining thank me today. You. This was so much fun. Um, you are, fun. Oh, it was fun. I would love to, I'd love to do it again. Um, if you would love to do it again. I, I'm actually going to do, start doing live streams on, uh, on, on, on rumble. So I'm going to have you on my channel soon. Oh, yes, yes. I would absolutely we'll talk about to... all the ridiculous stuff, whatever we want. Cause it's a free speech platform. <laughs> yes. And yeah, my, no, no, no disclaimers on rumble because everyone, everyone is, everyone knows what we mean. You're like, <laughs> yep. you know what I mean? They, they're all, they're all based as hell over there. They're, they're all based. I know. Oh, well, I look forward to it. Much love. And I will, I will see you in the next one, my love. All right. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Say bye, Ariel. Bye, bye guys.